let us come to the motivation for broadband wireless access technology. So, ultimately the result is that the user or we people are not satisfied with the power of the current technology. In terms of coverage, in terms of mobility as well as in terms of high data transfer rate, these are the basic requirements and all the technology we have discussed now, they have some or the other limitations. They say that this is the mantra of communication technology nowadays, make all types of information available anywhere, anytime but at low cost. To provide wireless services comparable to wireline network or fixed and mobile users, the answer is broadband wireless access technologies. And one family member in this broadband wireless access technology is WiMAX. In addition to WiMAX, there are some other technologies also. But I will concentrate on WiMAX because it is uh, the most uh, mature technology till date as compared to others. What is WiMAX? WiMAX stands for Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access. And this is the full form of WiMAX. It is the commercialization of IEEE 802.16 standard. As you know that when I uh, realize these IEEE 802.16, this is a working group and that, we, that has been assigned a task that you prepare the specification, you design this technology and then give the name of uh, some standard name. So, this is a working group that is working towards the commercial, uh, th that is the development of a WiMAX. Other uh, standards are also being developed, one is from ETSI, ETSI European Telecommunication Standard Institute, uh, one more is there from uh, TTA that is Telecommunication Technology L uh, Association. Uh, ultimately, WiMAX is the technology for wireless broadband access and being developed upon IEEE 802.16 framework standard. You can say that this is the logical successor to 802.11. It will provide the connectivity at all times, at all places, at affordable costs. What does it offer? See, when I say what does it offer, you have to keep in mind that what 802.11 has offered and then we shall compare it to. So that all those limitations which I identified over there should be overcome by WiMAX. Then and only then WiMAX can overcome, then and only then it can supersede those. See, it is interesting that WiMAX can offer the data rate up to 134 Mbps, uh, though it depends upon assigned bandwidth because there is a relationship between data transfer rate and bandwidth, C is equal to B log 2. So bandwidth is again adaptation, it is based on adaptation, we, I can provide more bandwidth, so the data transfer rate can be more. Anyhow, on the average it can provide up to 134 Mbps and average throughput 75 to 100 Mbps. Metropolitan area technology means it can cover the entire city. So, they, they, this, it means WiMAX falls under WMAN. Typical cell size can be 7 to 10 kilometer, it can be though up to 50 kilometer. But as you know that if you, you increase uh, the power, it has some other problems. Uh, range you can increase, but the data transfer rate will decrease because as you move away, signal strength will come down and have the data transfer. It does provide the mobility to fixed users, portable users and mobile users. Scalability is also there. As I just told you that bandwidth uh, which we give to a user is on the order of 1.5 to 28 megahertz. Uh, now you should compare the bandwidth uh, with, uh, with GSM and CDMA. GSM is the standard which we are using for our mobile telephony. Here the channel which is assigned to a particular user is only of 200 kilohertz. CDMA it is given. Do you remember? 1.25 megahertz. WCDMA, we are giving 5 megahertz. Here, we are giving 1.5 to 28 megahertz. So, quite large band we are offering to the user. So, he can enjoy any type of service. You know that when we want video, we need more bandwidth. If you want to enjoy some clips on the information network, you need wider bandwidth. Okay, so, so this does provide large bandwidth and hence the wonderful experience a user can have. Quality of service, differentiated services, cost, license free, I think I should move because it is somewhat uh, advanced. Basic architecture, it is a uh, general question that uh, now you will raise how, how does it look like, what are the various components in a WiMAX, you can always compare it with the cellular standard. It is again a cell based technology in which we have a base station. It is, uh, I will show uh, that diagram next. Then we have a subscriber station, subscriber terminal, 
let me show this one. This is the base, basic layout. On one hand, let us start with this is public telephone network. Here, internet service provider may be there, switching center is there. You start with the base station. This base station is something like a tower we do have in case of our mobile telephony. This base station is having an antenna. This antenna is making an interface with another antenna which is erected on the office building or residential subscriber. Okay? And then in the coverage region of this uh, antenna which we are calling it as uh, subscriber, uh, let me go further. We are having base station and ST that is subscriber terminal and SS that is subscriber station. So, we have base station then this antenna is having a subscriber station and subscriber station will be feeding to all the users within this coverage region. The terminal which is kept by the user is known as subscriber terminal. So, we have three things. One is base station which is a tower. Another is subscriber station and third is subscriber terminal. Subscriber terminal is like this laptop. So, it is with me. So, that will be termed as subscriber terminal. In case there must be some antenna which will be connected to the base station. So, that between that box and antenna is termed as subscriber station. So, there are three main components in WiMAX structure. Base station, subscriber station and subscriber terminal. The same thing I have written here. The subscriber station consists of a receiver, antenna and standalone box. Subscriber terminal, it is a card. Nowadays, laptops are fitted with WiMAX cards. Similarly, if you want to operate it on uh, wi uh, Wi-Fi, then you, uh, wireless card should be available with this. Okay? It is somewhat like network card. So, network card is for wired networks, wireless cards are for wireless networks. Then, uh, so uh, these PCM CIA cards are available and they sit uh, as far as the subscriber terminal is concerned. Then in a structure, you also need to have the link budget. Link budget means uh, you want to cover a certain range. Here is the transmitter on the other hand, we have the receiver. So, the signal strength decreases with respect to distance. So, you know that at, at this is the farthest point. So, at least enough power should be transmitted so that it can reach the farthest points. That is known as link budget. Again, originally this uh, WiMAX was designed for high frequency range starting from 10 gigahertz to 66 gigahertz. At high frequency, only line of sight propagation is possible. It cannot go around obstacles, but later on it was felt that uh, because it is not always possible to have LOS communication particularly in cities. In cities, there is hardly any line of sight communication. So, there may be vegetation, there may be skyscrapers, high rise buildings. So, we need to provide an LOS propagation. So, later on uh, some uh, let lower frequencies were also incorporated and those could provide an LOS propagation. Topologies. Uh, topologies as in case of wired networks, we have star topology, ring topology and so on. Same thing here, we have two important types of topologies in WiMAX. First is point to multi point. <coughs> it is the same thing like an access point. You put one access point and then all the wireless LAN users. So, uh, it becomes a point to multi point communication. So, here base station covers a certain geographical area. All base stations are connected to the fixed backbone network. They distribute the traffic to many subscriber stations. Another is mesh topology. In case of mesh topology, the idea is uh, something like ad hoc networks. I will give you the, this diagram. This will explain what the mesh topology is all about. Let us start with the radio tower. Radio tower is something a base station. From this base station, uh, I, let us see the upper upper one residential campus. It is having three houses. At this house, I can have a subscriber station. So, there is a direct communication possible between this radio tower and this one. Okay? So, so here LOS is possible. Then there is no need of mesh topology. You come uh, at the lowest part. 
and the lowest part I am having two houses and then uh, in the middle of these two I am having other, another campus having two houses. This, this you see that due to the vegetation between base station and this region, LOS is not possible. So they may not access the information network. The idea is that, okay, let us have, uh, we have the connectivity to this area and whatever subscriber station you have installed here, it will also act as a router and router can relay the traffic further. So whatever information you are accessing here, that again can be relayed to this portion. This is known as mesh topology. Is it clear? So the, the biggest advantage of the mesh topology is that in case of NLOS, you can make the communication possible. Otherwise, you require LOS, but if every subscriber station is also relaying the traffic further rather than distributing it just to the users, it can again relay the traffic to another subscriber station and then subscriber station will distribute the traffic to the user. So this is one uh, important technology which WiMAX can support. As far as the standard is concerned, uh, when I speak standard, it means I have to specify the physical layers as well as media access control layer. The frequency range I have told you 10 to 66 gigahertz, but it does provide the LOS communication only. But for wider channels, we do uh, the 10 megahertz. Otherwise, I told you that the bandwidth spacing for a single user varies from 1.5 to 28 megahertz. So typically you can say 10 megahertz channel is provided to the user. Ease of multipath, very high capacity links, licensed as well as unlicensed bands, both the frequency range in both these spectrum is available for WiMAX. Data rate for LOS environment, it does provide up to 135 Mbps and LOS case 75 Mbps. WiMAX forum says that maximum throughput we can obtain from this is 15 Mbps per sector for 3.5 MHz channel bandwidth and for 10 MHz channel bandwidth 35 Mbps data transfer rate can be obtained. Uh, if we can use adjacent channels then we can increase this data transfer rate up to 350 Mbps. We can further decrease the interference and increase the capacity link by sectorized antenna. You can always compare this with cell based technology. In our old mobile standards, you will find sectorized antenna. There is no omnidirectional antenna. We have three sectors, 120 degrees each. The advantage of that is, what is the advantage of that? In all the towers, we have sectored antennas. The 360 degree is, is split into three sectors and one antenna is covering 120 degree. The advantage of that is there that uh, uh, rest of the two 120 degrees, all those users will not interfere with this user. And hence, the interference is reduced to a large extent by sector, sectorized antenna. So same thing we can do here, we can, because it is some, the, the tower is something like cellular standard. So we can use the sectorized antenna and further improve the bandwidth. Yes, uh, I don't know you know o OFDM, nowadays all the wireless communication technology is based on OFDM, it is a modulation technique and it is wonderful to work with. And uh, in one go, if somebody asks how does this WiMAX provide such high data transfer rate, the one answer will lie in OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. It is a multi-carrier modulation technology available spectrum here, the idea is, see in wireless communication the problem is from interference and delay spread. So in this technology, we split the entire spectrum, let us say we have, this is the entire spectrum. This entire spectrum can be split into n sub channels like this. And then these these are known as sub carriers. These sub carriers will be required to carry the traffic. Traffic here is the message or information which the user wants. So we have the spectrum which we have assigned to the user like 10 megas and so it is split into a number of sub channels. So when we I, I split this into a number of sub channels, it means 
uh, for a particular carrier the bandwidth is reduced bandwidth becomes let us say it is 10 megas n is 10 so one carrier will become only of one megas so the 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 the, the repercussion of this uh, reducing the bandwidth will be that the data transfer rate will be low now what will be its advantage when the data transfer rate is low the delay spread is always measured in terms of uh, the bit duration when data transfer rate is low bit duration is more and hence the delay is spread as compared to this bit duration becomes less and once it is less then interference is reduced this is the funda of OFDM because wireless communication is limited by multipath fading so it becomes resistant to multipath fading and delay spread okay so that's why the such a high data transfer rate we can avail in WiMAX the credit to a large extent goes to OFDM. The same thing I have written here is uh, robust as far as interference is concerned. These are the standards 802.16, it uses wireless MAN, single physical layer, then NLS case 802.16 2004, this version was released and published in December 2004, that is why the name. It has three layers, single carrier and two physical layers. Channel bandwidth 20, 25, 28 megahertz. Again, LOS provide the raw data rate up to 36 to 135 and LOS, which I am repeating again. Uh, this is again a uh, very good area where you can start with. If you want to increase the capacity of WiMAX, you can pick up this memo, multiple memo. Uh, this is the advanced antenna technology and modulation. So, we can increase the capacity to a large extent by having adaptive modulation and smart antenna.